Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new video. So I apologize. I know I haven't uploaded on my channel for a couple of weeks. It's just been a mega busy period for me. There's two like main busy periods for me. Number one being kind of like the transition time between summer and winter, um, purely because the types of products, the collection of products that I sell have um, changed quite a lot. And I've also been away as well. However, now that I'm back and things are starting to quiet down, then all going well, the plan is to start uploading to my YouTube channel every other day. So today then, I've got quite an important video in my opinion. Um, we're gonna be talking about the three biggest Facebook ad mistakes of 2019. So over the course of the past kind of six months, pretty much the whole year, um, I've got a chance to speak to quite a lot of people, whether it's in the comment sections of these videos, whether it's in the one-to-one -one calls, and I've put together then the three biggest Biggest mistakes I see people making when it comes to Facebook ads when it comes to marketing so in my opinion then marketing is pretty much the most important part of any single business because it doesn't matter how good your product is how good your store is if you can't get the traffic onto your store to buy your product then you're not gonna make any money so that's what we're gonna be focusing on today and I'm 100% sure then that if you follow these mistakes and I'm gonna show you the solutions follow the solutions then they're gonna save you some money so that's the top of the video then thanks again for tuning in and let's get straight into it. Number one then is targeting audiences that are too big. Now guys, if you have any questions whatsoever on anything at all, regardless of whether it's related to this video or not, um, I do read every single comment, so make sure you post them below and I will get back to you. I answer every single one. So why this doesn't work in the beginning then? Why you shouldn't be targeting audiences that are too big? So I see it time and time again, people targeting audiences of 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million people, and this won't work in the beginning. And the reason for that being then, is that Facebook works on past data. So with no past data, if you have a fresh pixel, then your ads will deliver aimlessly and therefore inefficiently. Think about it, Facebook doesn't know what your product is. So it's the equivalent then, this is the metaphor I come up with just to kind of illustrate this as clearly as possible, is that if you have a room with a million people in and then you ask a stranger, this stranger by the way is playing the role of Facebook, to go into that room and ask people to buy your product. But the catch is then Facebook, this person, this stranger, they don't know who your product is, so they have absolutely no idea who to ask to buy your product. It could take them days, it could take them months, sifting through these one million people before they come across one single person who's going to be interested in your product because they don't know what the product is, they don't know who's gonna be interested in it. Whereas if you show that person, that stranger, who's playing the role of Facebook, a previous customer base, previous sales, so you show them the age, the gender, the location, and the interests of the previous 100 people who bought this product, when they next go into that room armed with that information, they'll know exactly who to ask, or at least they'll have a better idea of who to ask. And essentially, this is exactly what you're doing. By having no past data with a fresh pixel, asking Facebook to go into an audience of a million people and ask people to buy your product, it might cost you hundreds of dollars, if not thousands, before you get any significant return. But basically, what I'm trying to say is that Facebook works on past data. If it has no past sales, sales and no past customer profiles to work on, then a million people is a huge audience for it to go out um, and try and find customers in and it may end up wasting quite a lot of your budget. So for example then, if you start with an audience size of 2 million people, um, let's just base the average CPM, which is around $10, um, just for the sake of this example. Most people start with $5 per day. So after two days of spending $5 per day, then approximately you will have reached 1,000 people. This equals 0.05% of the total audience tested. That is such a tiny percentage that is nowhere near efficient or adequate to base your findings on. There's no way you could spend only $10, test 0.05% of an audience, and then decide whether it's a good product or whether it's a good audience. It's not adequate or efficient testing. And as it says there, then this will require thousands of dollars to test the audience adequately because it's such a large audience. So what is the solution of this? How do we get around this? How do we avoid wasting our money? How do we avoid testing inadequately? In the beginning then, go for smaller audiences audiences, so up to 500k people. Trust me guys, I've tested this time and time again and it works the best way. It is to, to get the best return on your money especially in the beginning with a fresh pixel, this, this is 100% the way to go. So up to 500K and spend more on them before writing them off. So don't just spend $10 because that isn't enough. Rather than split your budget over say 
20 different ad sets just focus on say one to five ad sets and put your your testing budget into those one to five rather than split them across many purely because to test an audience adequately you have to test as high percentage as possible at least one percent at least at the very minimum so by choosing smaller audiences then not only do you increase the quality of the audience but you also make it cheaper to test once you start to get results then for example consistent sales and 100 plus purchases then start to scale and you can do this then by increasing the audience size so basically the way i'm trying to think about it is that if on one hand you have your audience size and then on the other hand you have the amount of purchases um seen then as the amount of purchases goes up then you can also start to increase the audience size as well because as this goes up as the number of sales go up then your pixel starts to become more matured it starts to become more optimized and therefore you can go after the larger audiences so with that being said then guys that's point number one hopefully that all made sense um, like i said earlier any questions whatsoever please feel free to ask Moving on to point number two then, pricking broad audiences, and this essentially comes down to quality over quantity, making sure you're choosing a quality audience. So what exactly is a broad interest then? What does this mean? So the interests you pick shouldn't be random, they should be picked for a certain reason because of the kind of people, the kind of audience that would be included within that interest. So for example then, I always like to use examples or metaphors just to kind of illustrate my point or make sure you understand it as clear as possible. Um, and in this example then, let's say that I'm selling within the pug niche and the product I'm selling is for a pug. Therefore, my target customer is people who own pugs because they're gonna be buying a pug product for their pug. So the niche is the pug niche and the interest that I'm gonna use as an example is I love pugs. So yes, this interest is related to pugs, but think about who will actually be included in that interest, the kind of audience that interest will contain. So it's called I love pugs. And to love pugs, as it says here, you don't have to own a pug to love them. Because they're quite a peculiar dog, they're quite a cute, small looking dog, then they get a lot of interest and a lot of love from a lot of people. They don't necessarily have to own a pug to love them, if that makes sense. Therefore, this interest is likely to contain a lot of people who don't own pugs and therefore probably won't buy your pug product, if that makes sense. To give you another example then, um, the golf. Say I'm selling within the golf niche. If I choose Tiger Woods um, as an interest, yes, he's a golfer, and yes, the audience is absolutely massive, but you don't have to play golf or be interested in golf to know who Tiger Woods is. Therefore, that audience, that interest, is gonna contain a lot of people who don't even play golf, and therefore, they probably won't be interested in my product. Whereas if I was to choose a golfer such as Bubba Watson or Ricky Fowler or Luke Donald, then if you're not that interested in golf, the chances are you probably don't know who they are, and therefore, they might make good examples of people to target when it comes to selling in the golf niche because only keen um, and avid golfers are gonna know who those pros are. So what is the solution to this then? How do we avoid picking these broad interests that aren't gonna contain many buyers? Think about interest categories before doing your research for actual interests and make sure those categories are related to pug owners slash people already buying in your niche. Now the reason I put that then is purely because it doesn't matter what niche you're in, this principle still applies. So for example then, if I'm selling in the pug niche, then I wanna try and find audiences and interests that are related to people spending money within the pug niche already. So I could look at certain magazines because you have to spend money on a magazine um, to buy it, to read it. And therefore, if somebody's spending money on a pug magazine, the chances are they own a pug. Like, there's not gonna be many people out there that don't own pugs, but then buy pug magazines. It doesn't make sense. Same for pug brands. There might be certain pug foods or certain pug training or certain pug websites. And again, people related to those interests, the chances are they own a pug, otherwise they wouldn't be paying for pug food or paying for pug training or paying for different pug toys or whatever it is. And the principle applies then to no matter what what niche you're in so for example then going back to the golf niche i play golf i subscribe to a magazine called golf monthly the chances are there's not going to be many people paying for a golf magazine unless they play golf themselves so no matter what niche you're in just try and apply this principle think about where your people are spending money. Are they reading certain magazines? Are they going to certain websites? Are there certain brands that they're buying? And just make sure those brands are purely and only relatable 
to your niche. So that being said then guys, that is number two, which is picking broad interests. Moving on to number three then, which is focusing on front end sales. This is something that I myself fall guilty of, and certainly I see a lot of other people falling guilty of as well. So exactly what does this mean then? What does focusing on front end sales means? It means that if one day you spend 10 pound um, you expect to make £20 back in that same day. So essentially you want to profit day to day, i.e. seeing an initial and immediate return from what you spend on Facebook ads. Now, why shouldn't we do this then? And there's a number of reasons, to be honest. Number one, Facebook ads are getting more expensive. There's over 7 million advertisers using the platform now um, to advertise as opposed to only 5 million in 2017. So the amount of people coming onto the platform and advertising is significantly increasing and in return for that, it's driving up costs. Number two, people don't always buy the first time they see your ad, which is especially true for more expensive products. So anything over $40, maybe a bit more expensive in fact, then before somebody makes a purchase from you and from your site, then they'll have to see your ad or your product, your brand, um, on average, seven times. It's called the marketing rule of seven. You a simple Google search, you'll be able to get more information on this. So by focusing on those front end sales, then you potentially miss out on so much more money, so many more sales, because unless you're running to a very, very, very small audience, then the chances are your frequency score is gonna be under two. And therefore, you're gonna be missing out on so many more sales simply by showing the same ad um, to somebody a few more times. Number three then, there's so much more money to be made using other methods. Facebook ads, in terms, of front end, in terms of front end sales with Facebook ads, typically that's gonna be the most expensive conversions you ever pay for. So by purely just focusing on that, then you're focusing on the most difficult thing to do. There's so many more ways of bringing in traffic and money to your store um, for a lot of cheaper cost as well. Just to name a couple retargeting ads, which we're gonna be mentioning on later in the video just quickly. Um, but then there's email marketing as well, another source that I see people not using at all. There's Google ads, there's so many other different ways purely just focusing on the front end sales when it comes to Facebook is going to be very difficult to do especially when it comes to longevity which brings us on to number four you need to establish a loyal customer base should anything happen to Facebook should any major changes happen so for example algorithm changes should your account get banned if you're purely just focusing on those front end sales then essentially overnight your business could go to zero so by building a loyal customer base your email lists etc um, scaling out into to other platforms, then if Facebook tanks or whatever happens, happens, yes, you're gonna lose a significant chunk of your business, but it won't put you under, especially if you're relying on this as your full-time income. So what is the solution and how do we make sure we don't fall foul to any of these problems? Drive traffic to your store from as many sources as possible and gather their emails by offering discounts, by running competitions, free products, etc. If you want somebody to give you something, you have to give them something first. So you have to provide value, whether it's a competition for something free, some sort of discount, um, whatever it is, just make sure that you give somebody something before you put your hand out. So retargeting ads then I briefly mentioned, typically the most profitable on Facebook that will get you the cheapest conversions. If you're not running retargeting ads, then you're 100% leaving money on the table. Um, it will also help people see your product for up to seven times, which takes us back to that marketing rule of seven. Typically then when I run my retargeting ads, I'll start them, depending on how big the audience size is, I'll usually start them at $10 per day, 10 pounds per day. Um, and then just keep an eye on your frequency score. And as that starts to creep up, then just simply adjust your budgets. Moving on then, email marketing, give value first. As soon as you get somebody's email, don't just send them an email immediately saying, buy this product, buy this product. Um, you have to give them value first, and this is key. People want something for free before they buy from you. So give them something they will actually find useful. Don't just send them a link to, here's some random blog post related to dogs because you own a dog. If they own a Labrador because they've bought a Labrador product, send them some sort of Labrador training ebook or something like that. It takes time, but at the end of the day, we wanna build a proper, substantial, legitimate business here. We want the content, we want the resources to back it up, and trust me, this will make a huge, huge difference. Next point then, focus on the most recent data when it comes to analyzing your ads. Overall, it's not always best. So what this means then is that when you're looking at the ROAS or whatever number you're looking at on your ad set, if you look at it overall, then it doesn't give you a picture of how that ad set is currently performing, especially in the beginning. So for example, if you run an ad set for a week, 
and you look at the overall results, the overall results might be very bad and you might think, oh, I'm just gonna switch it off because the results are rubbish. But what you need to do is you need to split up how you look at the results. You need to look at the first three days and then look at the last four days or perhaps the last, or perhaps the first three days, then the next two days and then the next two days after this because what you might see is that yes, the results in the beginning were very bad, but they're actually starting to improve. And what that tells you then is that ad set is starting to optimize and it's starting to bring in better results. So if you leave it to run for one extra week, then it might get to the point where it's profitable overall. Ad sets aren't always profitable from day one. It sometimes takes them five days a week, sometimes even two weeks for them to actually optimize and start bringing in profitable results. So if you're only ever running an ad set for three days and switching it off, the chances are you're not giving it time and you're gonna be wasting quite a lot of money. Final thing then is build your socials. Now this is, so when I say that, it means building your following on Facebook, building your following on Instagram, on Snapchat, on Pinterest, um, pretty much any way you can. And this is the hardest thing to do, but in the long run, the most beneficial. I'm not gonna spend loads of time because I could probably do a video specifically on this topic, but just to give you an example then, Kylie Cosmetics, um, I believe she turned over something like $650 million in her first year on Shopify, all from organic uh, marketing, all pretty much just from driving traffic from her socials. So not spending a single penny on advertising because she had built her socials and she had a significant following. If you had a million followers on Facebook, a million followers on Instagram, then you would never have to work a day in your life because you could drive traffic to any source you wanted to um, for free just by simply putting a post out on your socials and that being said guys that wraps up the video thank you very much for watching if you still are watching then thank you very much i feel like i've been droning on for ages i promise to try and make the video shorter um, and as it says here then thanks for watching please do check out my free ebooks in the video description below there's five different ones based on all different parts of your dropshipping business so check them out they've had really good reviews um, and with that being said then guys i'm not going to give away a consultation call in this video that will resume in my next one to give people a chance to comment on this one plus the winner will be announced in my previous video so there'll be two winners then announced in the next video and that being said then guys thank you so much for watching i really 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 do appreciate it like i said oh, i am going to get back to uploading videos every single other day so if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet please make sure you hit that subscribe button below the video and that basically guys thanks again for tuning in enjoy the rest of your evening and i'll see you all tomorrow